and in Texas and the rest of the states, if you get a federal law in, then we modify the state according to what is passed. So. Yes, and, and I know you've been instrumental in overseeing a lot of stuff like Medicaid Absolutely. here on the state level. Absolutely. And CHIPS and, and for our children. And like you said, uh, majority is federal funded and then, you know, we've got the state stuff, but that's still supplemented federally, you know, on Medicaid and everything. And, and, and uh, you know, I've got uh, real concern for the home health delivery preventative care opposed to, you know, uh, two nurses came up to me and said, uh, Missy Manis, one of them, and said, you know, I'm in the home health industry and my wife always reminds me of this as a home health owner. If we keep these people at home and we do some preventative measures, say make sure they get their medicines, they're not getting their heart overloaded and their fluid backs up and they end up in the ER, they end up in a three-week stay in the hospital, then they get discharged too early they go back home, not enough money for the uh, health care provider at home to do so many visits. They get sick again, and the cycle begins again. Home, ER, hospital, home, ER. And then in between, they, everybody throws their hands up and says, we can't take care of grandma and grandpa. Let's put them in a home. That, yeah, that's right. That, that's right. Is there any easy, I mean, there's no easy answers, but, it's uh, not, it's you know, not an easy answer. what are you hearing from as far as uh, your, the other, uh, your constituents on it? You know, I, I took some nurses up there and they said, you know, we need to take care of nurses, but, and our patients, because if you take care of the nurses and you provide enough hours and, and, and the overtime and, and some collective bargaining in there by balancing it by the people who give the jobs down here, you know, like Spawn and everybody else, the big employers, um, you know, but if you take care of those nurses, it just makes good sense that uh, the patients are going to get Absolutely. taken care of. One of the things, uh, since we talk health care, because everybody's talking about, like you said, the, uh, the medicine side, one of my interests is what you talked about, that's nurses and medical students. And sometimes what we should do is we're all focused up here. I think we should be more focused on the grassroots level where we're looking at more of our medical technicians, our nurses. Guys in the trenches. Are, that's correct, and our medical students where we can make sure that Texas is competitive. Because a lot of times we get so tied up, oh, we lost that grant money. Well, why would we want to lose grant money for a nursing program? Exactly. I mean, it extends lives, it takes care. You and I have talked, as you know, I'm a diabetic. In South Texas, diabetes is a big issue. We should be doing everything we can to promote the nurses and promote our doctors, especially in connection with diabetes research and development. So these sort of issues. And then I'm a big, as you know, because my wife had uh, breast and then she had uh, lung cancer. I think that we should be really doing all we can to make sure all dollars for research and development of cancer, be it breast, prostate, whatever, go there and don't get diverted off to other programs. So I would take more of a grassroots approach to the whole health care issue and make sure that we first take care of our folks and then look at more of the big picture later. Yeah, and we're looking at grants and things like that to do programming here on KTMB and elsewhere and load it up on Facebook right. and Twitter and everywhere where we're bringing out the, the education on diabetes. We're bringing out the preventative education and how people, the Bill of Patients Bill of Rights, uh, you know, and get everybody involved. Get the, get the people that are taking direct patient care, going out, knocking on those homes, walking in there, taking the blood pressure, checking that blood sugar, and Absolutely. making sure that everything and the providers, the you you're talking about grassroots, the providers out there that go into the home day in day Absolutely. out, take care of those people, so they don't end up in a nursing home. My hats off to them. Each and every one of the providers that works for my wife and works for all these home health that go out there, they, it's a thankless job. Absolutely. And they don't get paid a lot. You know, we wish we could pay them more because the government pays us. And uh, we try to take care of them, but we want to say thanks to them. They're the ones that need to attend these town hall meetings and get politically involved. And there's another issue, a bill that we introduced. And I didn't know this, and I learned this uh, from folks in this town. And we all hear about this, is Lyme disease. And I introduced legislation to have an interim study to look at Lyme disease. And a lot of people go, what's Lyme disease? Which it's... 
it's a disease that a lot of people thought you only got from deer. It's infected ticks and infected fleas, and we're in South Texas. There are a lot of families in Texas and in our area who don't feel the effects till years later, but they can't get treatment in Texas. They have oh, to go out goodness. of state. And that, what it does then is then if you're a family that can afford to go out of state, we, you're okay, but what happens if you can't? And this Lyme disease I learned, debilitating, just a terrible thing. And here's an issue in the healthcare arena that we need to look at. I remember, just to let you know, some people came in to talk to me about it, and I knew them very well, and they were telling me about their kids. And I remember the kids the first time I was in office, they were little. And now I see them grown up, <laughs> and they're just hurt by this, and it, it touches you. And so I guess one of my other passions is in the health, is to make sure we study these issues where our Texans are getting afflicted, cancer, Lyme disease, diabetes, and do what we can to fix it on the front end here in Texas. And I think if we do more of this, you'll see positive views on health care rather than the negative debate that we're having. Up and I saw that you supported uh, the people over 65, heart checks. Absolutely. And Renee prostate. Oliveira, Renee Oliveira, good friend of ours, Cameron County. Here he went through a legislator who had this terrible problem, uh, could have died, and he brought a example of a bill to my committee insurance, which I supported on the floor as well. I remember that. And to me, here is a South Texas, uh, and a town, South Texan legislator who's had a direct experience, that's what that hits home, because you, I see in him the friends that I have here. You've got the floor, we got three minutes, it's all yours. What do you want to say out there? and what? issue do you want to make sure that we've covered in the legislative roundup here? It's, it's really, uh, we might want to do another show here in a month because you're going to have a November 3rd constitutional amendment election. Just so everybody knows, we've had a lot of uh, amendments and everybody goes, why do we have those constitutional amendment <laughs> elections? And it's right. because certain laws can only be changed uh, if you go to the Constitution of the, United, uh, of, the, of the state of Texas, not the United States. There is going to be an election on November 3rd. It's going to deal with eminent domain, the private property rights, appraisals on the taxes, some of those issues. Oh, are. boy. So I'll, I'll, I'll get you some information. It's something for maybe a future show as we get closer to November. Overall, my, my statement is it's great to see you. Thank you for doing the community a, a service by doing this show because not only are you getting messages out for our community, you're doing it regionally. And I saw in this legislative session as a community and as a region, when we stick together, South Texas wins. So keep up the good work. Uh, we'll be here for 15 months developing ideas. And anything you have or your listening audience, please call us. If I could sing, I'd sing the love boat right now. There you but, go. We'll uh, go I'm back to do it well, because the... they will immediately flip me off. <laughs> <laughs> the channel, the channel. God, let's take it easy. I meant the channel. Uh, and, uh, you know, but uh, I'm very excited what we talked about. I need for you to come on again uh, more than because that. you really let us have an idea of what's going on out there. And the people that are, ladies and gentlemen, the people out there that say my vote doesn't count or my legislator won't listen to me. That's simply not true. It's not because I'm on TV that I go over there. He meets with everyone. He met with nurses at the grassroots level. I just happened to be there, met with them, personal touch, and, and that's what you get from and our legislators. Ladies and gentlemen, he was all dressed up in a suit and tie right there in Austin. The Tony Soprano of South Texas, perhaps. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, uh, I'm very, I'm very excited about all the work that you're doing. Um, I can't thank you enough for coming on. It's I mean. It's easy. It's it's like slipping on a comfortable pair of shoes when you come on. Theo Todd Hunter. Don't forget electtodhunter.com. He's got Facebook. He's got Twitter. He's going to do his best to bring on cruise lines. We've sent out the search party. America's most wanted. John Walsh is looking for Ugo Berlanga <laughs> right now. Let's flash that picture up. If you've seen this man, tell him we want him on our show. He's the most wanted on South Texas Crossfire. Ugo Berlanga, the right hand to Todd Hunter. Thanks for <laughs> Thank coming Thank you, my on. friend. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. And that's all for now. Stay tuned. We're going to have more programming just like this in the coming weeks. We're going to bring on Todd Hunter again, our legislator, doing what he needs to do out there in Austin and here regionally for us. Thank you, and God bless.